Gang, it's your boy with the fat swaggy reacts, and we are back with another reaction video, man. And shout out to Mr. Nightmare, man. Like, we back with Scary Hour, bro. Y'all know what time it is. Tonight, we're gonna be checking out three true scary horror stories. Again, like, shout out to Mr. Nightmare, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because normally when he drops these videos, do pretty good. Now, if you guys are checking this video out for the first time. I drop one of these every night at 11 p.m., man. I've been on a crazy, like, no, I took a couple of days off because I, I went to the dentist, you know what I'm saying? My, like, lip was all still swollen, this, that, and the third. I couldn't even talk. That's why I haven't been uploading the last couple of days and stuff, you know what I'm saying? But, but we back at record, like, schedule programming, so like, share, comment, subscribe. I ain't finna hold y'all up, bro. Let's go ahead and get into this thing. Shout out to Mr. Nightmare, man. Let's go. When my dad was around 50, he got an African Grey. He always loved parrots his whole life, so I was happy for him to get one after his retirement. He named the bird Kevin. My dad taught Kevin- Hey, so how do you guys feel about, uh, like, pet birds and stuff like that? As far as, like, uh, like, what's your favorite kind to have, like, a parrot or, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm not sure on what type of- I mean, the different type of birds you can get as far as, like, pets. Like, I'm not, or whatever, like, I'm not sure. But you guys can let me know by letting me know, like, the names of them and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it'd be dope. Let's go. ...to get one after his retirement. He named the bird Kevin. My dad taught Kevin a whole vocabulary of words. And he actually trained him to understand the meaning behind certain words. Like, hello, what's up, food, thank you, good, and a few others. My dad passed away at 70. And with that came the time to figure out amongst my siblings and I what would happen to Kevin. My brother and sister didn't want the responsibility of taking Kevin into their homes. Plus, their spouses were against it too. But I couldn't bear the idea of giving him away to a new home. Right. Kevin was and is one of my last connections to my dad. In a sense, that was his best friend. So I decided I would take him into my home. I put his cage in the den of my house. My house doesn't have a basement, so the den is considered the lowest level of the house. Kevin is a moderately noisy bird. He could be a chatterbox some hours of the day, usually earlier on. Yeah, like, and I was gonna, gonna also say that, man, because with some pets, like, with some, um, like, pet birds, they don't know how to be quiet sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It could be, like, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, like, they're making noises, pissing you off, waking you up. So, yeah, I, mean, I can see that as well. But later in the day and at night, he quiets down. When he's too noisy, I'll throw a blanket over his cage, and that normally quiets him down. I watch TV in the den at night to keep him company. Then around 10, I'll migrate to my room to let him go to sleep. That's pretty much the backstory behind Kevin. I've been taking care of him for two years now, so I know exactly how he behaves and when he's acting out of the ordinary. Speaking of out of the ordinary, there was one night in December around 11 p.m. that Kevin started making sounds while I was trying to sleep. I sleep with the door open since I live alone and need to be able to hear anything if something's going on in the house. Hearing him making his squawking noises past dark, especially this late at night, is unusual beyond doubt and something was irritating him. I went down to the den to see what was bothering him. He was wide awake on the lower perch of the two in the cage. He looked at me and was saying things like hello and what's up and his name. All the while, he was nodding his head up and down, moving his whole body in the process as if he were dancing. I tried to feed him, but he didn't eat, so I covered him with the blanket, hoping he would stop. I was in the kitchen when I stopped inside, because he was still making the noises, and I had a feeling he wasn't going to stop. Having worked the next day, I couldn't afford to lose sleep because of him. I really didn't know what to do. I'm still to this day not exactly a bird expert. I went back downstairs and uncovered him. He was still doing his little dance, bobbing his head and body and making his distressed sounds. It didn't click with me, until thinking I heard something in the pantry closet a few feet away from his cage. I walked over to it, and hovered my hand over the light switch to the pantry, which was outside of the door. The door has one of those big glass panels that many pantry doors have, so when I flicked the light switch, I saw the outline of a body on the inside. My flight or flight response kicked in, and I chose fight. Of a body? Whoa, 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 Like somebody's in the house? Whoa, 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 whoa. ...that many pantry doors have. So when I flicked the light switch, I saw the outline of a body on the inside. 
my flight or flight response kicked in and I chose fight. I opened the door screaming, trying to get my adrenaline rushing, and I grabbed the man in the pantry closet out and threw him to the floor. He tried to fight back, but I easily overpowered him and had him in what I could best describe as a chokehold. Oh, wow. He was a 50-something year old homeless looking man with the smell to match it. I yelled at him, who are you? Why are you in my house? He tried grabbing my face to possibly gouge my eyes or something, but I continued to wring his neck and punch him. Yes, sir. During all of this, Kevin was Be going berserk. Beat his ass, exactly. He's in your, yes sir. Exactly, exactly why Bella be out here. If I hear her barking, I know somebody's in the house and, and, and bro, you gonna catch a few hot ones. I'm not playing with you, my guy. I'm not playing not a single game. But you know I mean? continued to wring his neck and punch him. During all of this, Kevin was going berserk in his cage. <laughs> when the man on the floor seemed weak enough, I literally sprinted for the nearest phone and came right back and kept him on the ground while I called 911. The man was taken to jail, but he had no ID on him, nothing. He was homeless and had nothing to his name, and as such he was considered what some people call judgment proof, meaning even if I tried to sue him, I wouldn't get anything from him. He had raided my pantry closet that night and had opened jars of peanut butter, boxes of cookies and crackers, and all sorts of other boxed and canned foods. Oh, wow, if it yeah. weren't for my dad's parrot, I don't know what else that man would have taken or done in my house. Exactly. Now, I'm saying, I mean, he could have did any type of harm to you, but obviously he was just hungry, so he was eating this, that, and the third. But at the same time, it's like, bro, you, like, you snuck into my home. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what if I would never had this bird here? Like, like what? What are your intentions? You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, please be careful, bro, out here. I'm grateful for Kevin, and I like to think part of my dad is watching over me and that bird. Fire. Dope. For sure. For sure. For sure. This story takes place when I was a junior in high school. For context, here's a little background information. Back in the day, I was a pretty involved student, took all the hard classes, and was in a few varsity sports. In one of these ways, I was always busy and didn't have much time for myself, and part of me was thankful for that. It provided me an escape from a world where my parents had recently parted ways and my older brother had just gone to college. It was just me and my little brother then. He also was a swimmer and a smart kid in his own right. We were really similar, even to this day. But probably because of the stresses our family situation put on us at the time, we didn't get along, near at all. One of those wet winter days in the Midwest, I'd put in my time at school and swim, and I still had to sit down for several hours of homework. This time I had to write an essay for some advanced class that I wasn't really interested in. I dropped my swim bag at the door when I got home and looked around my house to see if anyone was home. Empty. Dad must be out with Reese at swim practice. His club team had the slot at the pool after the high school team was done. I popped in a mouthful of Cheez-Its and headed down to the basement to my office to get some schoolwork done. The house was a middle class two story with an unfinished basement with the exception of what I referred to as my office. From a career past, my dad used to work from home but no longer did. I was the only one who used this place, so my family or what was left of it just called it Quinn's office. So I made my way across the concrete floors and unattached carpet samples down there to the one finished out room in the basement. I flicked on the CFL light. It was like any other night after practice. I still had hours of homework to do. So I turned on the computer and started typing away. I was typing, typing for what seemed like an hour, trying to bring to words to what the concept of hedonism and the picture of Dorian Gray meant to me as best I could, or as convincingly as I could. Out of the dark, I heard my little brother call out to me, Quinny, Quinny, come up. Almost reflexively, I called back to him, Reese, I'm working, what do you need? We would yell through the house like brothers do, but it took me a minute to realize I didn't hear him come home. I got no response, only for a couple minutes though. Again, I heard my little brother's voice sing out, Quinny, Quinny, come up. It felt strange hearing those words carry across the dark, concrete floor. He's supposed to be at swim practice. I called back out to him, asking if he needed anything, but again, I received no answer. I thought about just starting my essay again, but the family situation was delicate at best, and I didn't want to be in trouble if my little brother actually needed something. I made the decision to get up and go find out for myself. I bounded up the basement staircase, the only way a high schooler can, and I called out again for my brother. Reese, what's up? I'm really busy. 
I checked all around the main floor looking for my little brother or even signs he was home. No shoes, no... See, yeah, see, that's all red flags right there alone. You know what I'm saying? That's red flags all alone. You, 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 like, you're coming upstairs, there's nothing. It's pretty much pitch black, black in the house. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you didn't even hear him come into the home. So it's like, bro, you know someone is there that's not supposed to be there. So you need to be... Oh, man. Checked all around the main floor looking for my little brother or even signs he was home. No shoes, no backpack. So he wasn't home. And there was no car in the driveway either. The only reason my dad would be gone right now would be to pick him up. Satisfied, I turned back for the stairs. When I heard my little brother's voice ring out, Quinny, Quinny, come up. This time, every hair in my body stood on end. It just didn't make sense. He had to be at practice. And if he really needed me, he would have come to me. Right. I go to the base of the second floor stairs and called out to him one more time. Reese, what's going on? Are you okay? For a minute, no answer. Reese, I'm really busy. Can you tell me what's up? It's quiet for way too long as I stared up the dark staircase. Logically, oh, I had no reason to believe anyone was up there until I heard Reese's voice calmly speak this time and not call out in his sing-song way those same four words. Quinny, Quinny, come up. Uh, no, nigga. What? I asked under my breath. I couldn't comprehend the situation. I did quick inventory of any probable scenario. Break in? Wrong voice. A prank? I would have seen something at this point. It had to be Reese, and maybe helping him would make me no, a good brother. Bro, no, bro. So I began up the stairs. No. My heart pounded with each step, and I was about to make the landing to the dark second floor. Then I heard the buzz of the garage door motor. I ran back down the stairs and looked out the window. It was my father's sedan, and him and my little brother got out. I stumbled from the window to the hall where they would enter, and I felt my heart almost stop beating. I collapsed on the floor and just started to cry uncontrollably. Wait, so who... Bro, see what... So... He never found out who... who... Peace, and maybe helping him would make me a good brother. So I began up the stairs. My heart pounded with each step, and I was about to make the landing to the dark second floor. Then I heard the buzz of the garage door motor. I ran back down the stairs and looked out the window. It was my father's sedan, and him and my little brother got out. I stumbled from the window to the hall where they would enter, and I felt my heart almost stop beating. I collapsed on the floor and just started to cry uncontrollably. So you're not gonna see who's in your fucking house? Like, no, like, I would've got my pops, I would've told my little brother, like, look, stay, 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 stay. like, stay in the car right now, like, let's see, like, like, me and pops finna go really examine this house right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, see who's in our fucking house, cause someone's here, someone's here, but you, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, bro, nah, bro, I ain't cool with that, like, I'm not finna just be stumbling. No, bro, I'm, I'm finna see who the fuck is in my house. Excuse my language, but yeah, bro, like, what is wrong with that? You just gonna cut the scene off like that at that? Come on, bro. Come on, bro, we need to see, like, we need to know what happened. This was like 15 years ago now when I was a kid. I was with my best friend Jackson at some abandoned family resort or bungalow colony type place in New York. It was off a main road and then down a private dirt path driveway entrance. And it was a rather large property with a bunch of old abandoned buildings including at least 10 small bungalows, a main hall, a few bathroom stations, and an indoor pool house. Along with that was an outdoor pool, a shuffleboarding area, and a kids playground. Everything was old, run down, and with tall overgrown grass growing over it. We found this place accidentally one time walking down Route 209, but we didn't explore it that day. We came back another night. By the time we went, it was past sunset. The sun was kissing the sky goodnight. It was getting very dark, but we didn't want to come during the day in fear of getting caught and getting charged with trespassing. We brought along walkie-talkies and flashlights with us to communicate to each other when we'd split up. We started looking around the bungalows together. Most of them looked the same and were relatively small. One or two beds each, a small kitchen, and one bathroom each. Some of them had these little living room areas. Halfway looking through these bungalows, 
I split off from Jackson because he was moving kind of slow. I tried to enter the building that looked to be the main hall or office or something, but every entrance was locked. I walkie-talkie Jackson to tell him that the big building was locked. He didn't walkie-talkie back. I wondered if I was out of range from where he was. Two minutes later, I found myself at one of the two bathroom buildings. It was probably a 400 square foot building. There were no doors to the building though. It was unusual. It just had two big openings, one for the men's room, one for the women's room. I remember the signs being faded and worn out looking. Then I saw these red tracks on the dirty old concrete bathroom floor. Now I'm not going to sit here and say they looked like bloody footprints, but I couldn't explain what these red marks could be then, and I still can't say for certain now. Regardless, it was pitch black inside that bathroom around that corner, and that was the first building I was scared to enter. I tried walkie-talking to Jackson again, hoping he was in range this time. I pressed the button on the walkie and said, yo, where are you? When I let go, I heard the beep sound that the receiving walkie makes after getting a message from inside the bathroom. It gave me a near heart attack. Then I thought Jackson must already be in there, hence the red looking footsteps. I called his name and it echoed into the bathroom. I was actually about to step into the bathroom thinking he was hiding from me, pranking me, when I heard Jackson's voice call out from the distance behind me, outside in the darkness of the night. I heard him getting closer. Couldn't see him in the dark, but he obviously saw my light, so I yelled back, I found your walkie-talkie. I started stepping into the bathroom, but then he said back, don't go in there, I never went in there. This is when I turned around and hurried right out of there. I pressed and released the talk button really quick on my walkie, pausing the beep again from inside that pitch black women's room. Jackson and I looked at each other for half a second, then began dashing in the direction we came. We made it back to Route 209 and had to stop to catch our breaths. This is when Jackson told me that inside one of the bungalows he went into, he tried walkie-talking me but I wasn't answering, meaning we must have been out of range. But then he heard a noise from the living area of the bungalow. As he turned around, his flashlight revealed an older woman almost running towards him. Oh, he dropped his walkie-talkie and flashlight and ran out from the bungalow. He ran in the dark and hid, refraining from making noise in fear of being followed. He hid for a questionable amount of time before looking around Yo. and seeing my flashlight across the field, over at the bathrooms. The most likely explanation to me was that some cracked out drug addict was hiding or living in that abandoned bungalow and for whatever reason lunged at Jackson and picked up his walkie talkie. What she was doing in that bathroom, who knows. Maybe drugs, maybe the bathroom in the bungalow didn't work. But what I don't know is why was there a trail of what looked like blood in there? Those oh, are my theories, but I can't explain no. all of it away. Oh, that's the scariest no. part. I mean, so y'all never never know what people's mindset is, bro. She, I mean, I mean, because she clearly just said there was blood in there. Well, possibly blood. But like, if you would have went into that dark room, <laughs> it probably would have been your blood. Like, bro, bro, like, listen, listen, bro. <laughs> For y'all to be going out to these little abandoned places, this, that, and the third, man, thinking things aren't gonna happen, bro. Like, 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 bro, like it just takes that one person that don't care and, and, and it'll end up taking your life, maybe, bro. That's li that's possibly living in there, bro. Like real talk, bro. Like, like you guys gotta be cautious when you guys go into these abandoned places. You gotta be cautious in your own home, bro. You gotta make sure everything is locked up. Make sure your family is safe, bro. Know what I'm saying? Because there's crazy people out here in this world, bro. It really is, bro. Like, please be safe. Make sure you guys are tuned in tomorrow when I drop another one at 11 p.m. It's a scary hour. Know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about doing a... I'm going to be doing a Mr. Baller video. Know what I'm saying? Like, share, comment, subscribe, gang. And S-R-T. Gang. I am out this thing, man. Let's get it.